Hey there. Wow. Another week has come. Uh, it is Friday, uh, November the 13th, 2020. That'll put the scare into some of you for sure. Uh, thank you for joining me today on Encouraging Word, a brief word of encouragement from the Bible. My name is Dave, and I'm so glad to be with you today. Thank you for hitting share as well so other people can see this. Uh, this Sunday, our online service at 1030 is going to look a little different than normal. It's going to be very simple, very straightforward, very direct, uh, not very long. We want to talk about the church this week. And uh, so we, we're changing things up a little bit. It's, it's very plain. And uh, you can uh, see that. And I invite you to join us on our YouTube or on Facebook, 1030 Sunday morning. This week we have been talking about uh, the ways that we overcome the enemy, the ways that we live victoriously, triumphantly. And um, we have based it on what Revelation chapter 12 says in verse 11. It says there that they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not live their lives so much as to, or love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Uh, that's verse 11 of chapter 12. I believe that if you want to live triumphantly in your spiritual life, and indeed as a Christian in any area of your life, that the three things are really important. We've talked a lot about the blood of the Lamb, the legal rationale for why we can claim healing, salvation, victory over addiction, over despair, over worry. It's because Christ paid for you to live free. Christ paid the price so that you can live victoriously. We need to know what Jesus accomplished on the cross. We need to study it. We need to learn it. Uh, we need to understand that our triumph comes because Jesus literally paid the price for us. Secondly, we live triumphantly when we learn the power of our story. Um, the most powerful sermons ever spoken do not come from a pulpit, but they come over coffee, in a schoolroom, in a workroom. Uh, they come with ordinary people just like you sharing your story of what God has done in you or through you or for you and just telling people what God can do. That is powerful and you need to understand the power, powerful effect of your story. It really is powerful. Thirdly, and this is very difficult to talk about, but we overcome and we live triumphantly by our all-out effort by giving everything we have, by working harder than ever before, by doing a better job, by just giving God everything. I know there's a tendency for us to say that, um, you know, Jesus paid it all and uh, it's not what I do, but what he does. And it doesn't really matter what I do. But according to Jesus, it does matter what we do. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus once told a man who wanted to come and follow him, he said that the Son of Man, Jesus, had no place to even lay down. He had no home. And he told the man he needed to seriously consider whether he wanted to be a follower of Christ because it would require a big sacrifice. Another man wanted to follow Jesus, um, but he had some business to take care of. Uh, a family member had died and Jesus responded by saying, let the dead bury the dead. Like, ouch, that hurts. Uh, one man wanted to uh, go and say goodbye to his family first before he came to follow Jesus. And Jesus replied to him this way, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. That's Luke 9.62. Another man who wanted to follow Jesus was told to go and sell everything he had and give it to the poor. Jesus expected an all-out commitment. Um, Jesus expected that when, when we served him, when we gave our lives to him, it was everything. We were giving everything. When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, it was that we were to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our body. There were no half measures here. When Jesus asked about what it takes to be a follower of him, it was everything. He expected everything. He required everything. Uh, when Jesus spoke about 
what it meant to be a follower of Jesus, he used the term taking up your cross and following him. Nothing's left. Um, it's all out surrender. And uh, Jesus was not satisfied with half-hearted Christianity. It was all or nothing. And we shouldn't be satisfied with it uh, really either. I remember 1983. I remember the day very well. It was a summer, June or July. We were uh, moving. It was moving day. Uh, we had packed up our house and our church office in Pine Point, Northwest Territories, and we were moving to Saskatchewan. We'd spent four years in the territories pastoring, and we were now taking up another challenge in Saskatchewan. And I'd gone to visit my office for the last time. My office was on the second level, and uh, it had a big window uh, just before I went into my office, a big window over which I could see the school right across the street, I could see the street and people traveling up and down the street. I could see a little further off downtown. And I'd stood by that window many times praying and thinking of, of the town and praying for it. And I remember very clearly that morning um, filled with good memories, thinking about all that we had done and been through and all the rest of it. But one overwhelming thought came through and it was very strong. It was I could have done more. As I stood there that morning, I began to cry, realizing that I could have done more. I could have prayed harder. I could have preached harder. I could have loved people more. I could have reached out in greater ways. I felt like as I stood there that day, looking out over the town, there was more that I could have, have done. And I was convicted that day, and I made a promise that I would never have that accusation leveled at me again. And I want to do everything that I can to serve God. Theodore Roosevelt spoke about spending yourself in a worthy cause. I want to do that for Christ. I want to spend myself in a worthy cause. So you ask yourself, okay, I give my all, then what? What am I going to get for giving my all? Um, I serve the very best that I can in my church, in my community, um, in, in the school or where, with, I'm, with my family, wherever it is. I give everything. I hold nothing back. If that's true of you, then what? Uh, Peter once asked that question of Jesus. He said it very plainly in Luke chapter 18. We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? You know, we usually don't think in terms of what the disciples gave up to be Jesus' follower, but it was a big commitment on their part and a big sacrifice on their part. And Jesus responded to Peter that day. He said, truly, I tell you, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come, eternal life. Jesus requires a big commitment that we often tend to minimize. We tend to say, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that hard. It is a big commitment, and Jesus requires us to give our all. He wants every part of our lives. He wants nothing held back. But he promises that we will get repaid many times over in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. Um, eternity. So really when we ask ourselves, is it something that's costing me or is it is this an investment that I make so that I can get more? Um, I know for certain that this is how we live triumphantly, not by half-hearted Christianity, not by half-heartedly giving ourselves to Jesus, but by giving him everything that we have. Again, we don't talk a lot about it. We tend to minimize, we tend to downplay it, we, we, we tend to say, well, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, it's a big deal when you surrender your life to Christ and give him everything. Will other people understand it? No, they won't. Will other people mock you for it? Undoubtedly, they will. Uh, but this is the way that we live triumphantly. And this is what God most honors is all out commitment. He gave his all and he wants us to give our all. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for those who are watching today. Father, many people have made a commitment to serve you. And like me, sometimes we've been caught up short realizing that we could have done better. 
Father, we want to do our very best. We want to give our very best. If for some reason somebody here today is watching and they realize that they could do more, I pray, Father, you'll forgive them. I pray you'll encourage them. And I pray you'll strengthen them in the task of giving their all. For those of you who have given themselves already. I pray, Father God, that you will bless them. You'll pour out blessing in their lives, this life and the life to come, eternal life. Father, I pray that they will be richly aware of what you do in their lives every day. And so, Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Thank you for the opportunity to lay down my life so that I can serve you and others as well. So I pray your blessing upon each one this day. In your name we ask it. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, God willing, we will be back on Monday with another encouraging word. Trust you have a great weekend. God bless you.